Hi, Jesus. I'm going to read a little bit of inspiration to the folks. And uh, inspiration from you is always a good thing. This first one says this. Worship me only. I am the King of kings and the Lord of lords, dwelling in unapproachable light. I am taking care of you. I am not only committed to caring for you, but I am also absolutely capable of doing so. Rest in me, my weary one, for this is a form of worship. Though self-flagellation has gone out of style, many of my children drive themselves like racehorses. They whip themselves into action, ignoring how exhausted they are. They forget that I am sovereign and that my ways are higher than theirs. Underneath their driven service, they may secretly resent me as a harsh taskmaster. Master. Their worship of me is lukewarm because I am no longer their first love. My invitation never changes. Come to me, all ye who are weary, and I will give you rest. Worship me by resting peacefully in my presence. Praise God, huh? So it's not about running, doing. It's just simply about sitting with the Lord in the Lord's presence and letting Him be the master instead of us being the master. And Bible support for this is 1 Timothy 6, verses 15 and 16, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, Revelation 2, verse 4, and Matthew 11, verse 28. Here's another. Never take for granted my intimate nearness. Marvel at the wonder of my continual presence with you. Even the most ardent human lover cannot be with you always. Nor can another person know the intimacies of your heart, mind, and spirit. I know everything about you, even the number of hairs on your head. You don't need to work at revealing yourself to me. Many people spend a lifetime or a small fortune searching for someone who understands them. Yet I am freely available to all who call upon my name, who open their hearts to receive me as Savior. This simple fact of faith is the beginning of a lifelong love story. I, the lover of your soul, understand you perfectly and love you eternally. Some Bible support on this is from Luke 12, verse 7, John 1, verse 12, and Romans 10, verse 13. Here's another. When many things seem to be going wrong, trust me, when your life feels increasingly out of control, thank me. These are supernatural responses, and they can lift you above your circumstances. If you do what comes naturally in the face of difficulties, you may fall prey to negativism. Even a few complaints can set you on a path that is a downward spiral. spiral by darkening your perspective and mindset. With this attitude controlling you, complaints flow more and more readily from your mouth. Each one moves you steadily down the slippery spiral. The lower you go, the faster you slide. But it is still possible to apply brakes. Cry out to me in my name. Affirm your trust in me, regardless of how you feel. Thank me for everything though this seems unnatural, even irrational. Gradually, you will begin to ascend, recovering your lost ground. When you are back on ground level, you can face your circumstances from a humble perspective. If you choose supernatural responses this time, trusting and thanking me, you will experience my unfathomable peace. Praise God. And Bible support for this is from Psalm 13, verse 5, and Ephesians 5, verse 20. Here's another. 
I am the creator of heaven and earth, Lord of all that is and all that will ever be. Although I am unimaginably vast, I choose to dwell within you, permeating you with my presence. Only in the spirit realm could someone find, could someone so infinitely great live within someone so very small. Be awed by the power and the glory of my spirit within you. Though the Holy Spirit is infinite, he, he deigns to be your helper, deigns to be your helper. He is always ready to offer assistance. All you need to do is ask. When the path before you looks easy and straightforward, you may be tempted to go, go it alone instead of relying on me. This is when you are in the greatest danger of stumbling. Ask my spirit to help you as you go each step of the way. Never neglect, never neglect this glorious source of strength within you. Father, support from John 14, verses 16 to 17, from John 16, verse 7, from Zechariah 4, verse 6. Here's another. Remember that joy is not dependent on your circumstances. Some of the world's most miserable people are those whose circumstances seem the most inviolable. People who reach the top of the ladder career-wise are often surprised to find emptiness awaiting them. True joy is a byproduct of living in my presence. Therefore, you can experience it in palaces, in prisons, anywhere. Do not judge a day as devoid of joy just because it contains difficulties. Instead, concentrate on staying in communication with me. Many of the problems that clamor for your attention will resolve themselves. Other matters you must deal with, but I will help you with them. If you make problem solving secondary to the goal of living close to me, you can find joy even in your most difficult days. Praise God. And some Bible support from Habakkuk 3, verse 17, 19, and from 1 Chronicles 16, 27. Here's enough. Be willing to follow wherever I lead. Follow me wholeheartedly, with glad anticipation, quickening your space. Though you don't know what lies ahead, I know, and that is enough. Some of my richest blessings are just around the bend, out of sight, but nonetheless very real. To receive these gifts, you must walk by faith, not by sight. This doesn't mean closing your eyes to what is all around you. It means subordinating the visible world to the invisible shepherd of your soul. Sometimes I lead you up a mountain, high mountain, with only my hand to support you. The higher you climb, the more spectacular the view becomes. Also, the more keenly you sense your separation from the world with all its problems. This frees you to experience exuberantly the joyous reality of my presence. Giving yourself fully to these glory moments a wash in dazzling light. I will eventually lead you down the mountain back into the community with others. Let my light continue to shine within you as you walk among people again. Praise God. Second Corinthians five verse seven, Psalm ninety six verse six, John eight verse twelve, and Psalm thirty six verse nine. Great stuff. Brother tell me. Good stuff. My brother Anthony, grab the book. Although you get the book every day, because you watch this every day. I'm just going to try to get more and more, because, you know, the days don't matter to me on this, because one day is the same as the next. As long as you're with the Lord, you're all set. Okay. Lord, thank you for being in my life. I can't thank you enough on that one. And uh, thanks for the help with Judy's uh, PSP or animation this morning. 
and thanks for the eggs. And boy, there's not enough thank yous here, Lord. I could go on thanking for everything. Thank you for the day of life. Thank you for everything. And hopefully I get some more up on the internet, Lord. You can, your spirit can help me discern to get that done. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Take the time with Jesus. I'm telling you. It's the only way, folks. God bless you. Lord, thanks for being in my life.